Welcome back, Circuit fans, to Nettle Is It Done. I'm your host, Dominic, or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer. And we have another exhibition match. Sparkles playing light vehicles, or rovers, rather, versus Steel Blue going with Gunship Start. Steel Blue going with the Gunship Start. Okie dokie. That's going to be... That's just, I haven't seen Gunship Start in a long time. Intersection, I wouldn't say, is the best map for it, but... Uh, sure, give it a shot, see what happens. I mean, I'm actually quite curious how this is going to work out. Yeah, we haven't... I haven't seen Steel Blue play in a long time, so I'm not really sure what they're planning on for. Oh, okay, they're... Are they doing the cloaky thing, or are they doing the gunship thing? Make, make up your mind. Well, whichever. They're doing a thing. Sparkles is doing a more... Typical thing. What with the rovers being pretty much the map of choice in the intersection. But yeah, this is going to be a match. I mean, like I said, I don't really know what the plan is here as far as construction. Clearly, there is a plan for a cloaky switch. A very, very early cloaky switch at that. I'm not really sure the logic is there, but at any rate, the locusts have been revealed. Sparkles did see what Steel Blue was up to, and it should be going for crashes. Yep, there they are. First crasher coming already. 35 seconds to actually build that crasher. Oh, maybe 15. It's not going to be enough. Any anti air defenses being built up? No. Sparkles, their commander, of course, is just the standard laser commander, which is actually going to be really useful against this. So, maybe not a bad thing. The locusts don't do well against lotuses. So, this will actually work out pretty well. The crasher is able to build up. Forcing the Locusts to basically just go for the kill. Suicide mission at this point because there's no way those Locusts are going to be able to get away and deal damage. It's one or the other, and it's clear that Steel Blue does not want to completely throw this away. However, they do manage to save one Locust, surprisingly enough. Did not expect that. Do expect the fact that they're building up a Cloakybot factory, but at this point, Steel Blue hasn't really expanded that much. They're relying more on Reclaim and honestly are kind of falling behind. Another Locust coming in here, getting destroyed by a Fencer because... Again, your opponent knows you're going for air, and this is exactly this is exactly why Steel Blue is building the Cloakybot Factory, because they know that Sparkles is going for anti-air, and figuring, okay, well, Sparkles is just going to focus on anti-air, thinking this is going to be a gunship rush, it's going to be a lot of Locusts, Harpy's possibly coming into the Revenant, so got to be prepared for that, and Steel Blue is just going, you know, no, just a bait. What do I mean? Really expensive bait. Factories are 800 metal each. That's a minute and a half to build them up at default, well, like 10 metal per second standard construction power. So, you're not going to be able to easily do that. And the thing at this point is that these fencers need to be stopped. Like, they can't get... Even this close is probably a bit too close. Just the fact that they haven't really been stopped at this point, and there's still a cloak by factory under production, the fencers could theoretically find it. I mean, it's more likely that, say, darts or scorchers or whatever else, as we are seeing a switch back. No, we aren't! We have one dart! We aren't seeing any switch back at all! Steel Blue actually doing a pretty good job maintaining this convincing ruse. I mean, unfortunately, they are losing locusts in the process, but hey, it's mind games are mind games. I mean, you kind of got to sacrifice them a little bit. The important thing is that these cloak bots can be set up as long as possible and maintained some in some secrecy as long as possible, and that's not going to happen. Unfortunately, Steel Blue is putting the glaze very far forward, and that is going to be spotted. Like, these fences are going to see it. There's no way around that. This ruse will be found out, and it looks like... Oof, no. Sparkles already knows. Sparkle sees it, knows what's up. Any change in the factory... Not really, no. I mean, fencers are a good choice for dealing... Well, okay, they're a good choice in large numbers for dealing with glaze. They're not the best choice, but Sparkles didn't go for any particularly risky approach when it came to building their army. It was just, go for fencers. Go for some crashers, just in case, but mostly go for fencers, because fencers are pretty useful, although I think that Steel Blue might start to overwhelm the number of fencers Sparkles has, just because there are a lot of fencers, and they're very spread out. That being said, though, that was, what, two glaze for one Spencer? That was pretty much making cost. Like, these Spencers are, like, they are a good choice against glaives. They are at least going to be making cost. Might even be able to be highly efficient when it comes to having multiple Spencers. I mean, as you can see, one Spencer versus an army of, well, not an army, a small squad of glaives is still cost-effective against a small squad of glaives. The one downside, though, is that because glaives are a much, much lighter unit overall, it's easier for them to go around and actually start messing around with things, defending expansions, destroying expansions, just scouting in general. Not to mention, Steel Blue still does have a gunship plan. They could switch back to gunships anytime they wanted to. And they have 30 metal per second, so they could very well just do that right now, if they so chose. So that's the thing, is right now, Steel Blue is in a really strong position. Sparkles can defend anything that does get under attack, but Steel Blue can attack basically anywhere. So there's not really a whole lot of threat. At this point, center of the map, more fencers are being built up along with a couple Scorchers. I do like that switch back. Yeah, I've seen Scorcher Fencer. 
At this point, Sparkles seems to have decided that Steel Blue is not going to be going for much more in the way of air, which is not true. The gunships are still being built from time to time. It's just not very much. But yeah, at this point, Steel Blue can basically choose what army they go for, either heavy ground or heavy gunship. And that is going to be mildly confusing, but I think Sparkles, considering the air factory, should be fine. Sparkles will be able to set up a bunch of swifts and use that to completely control the air. At that point, I mean, Sparkles could, or sorry, Steel Blue could go for some tridents, and if they do, well, then that's tridents that help, but tridents are much lower than swifts. At that point, it becomes more of a slow push strategy, and at that stage, it's going to basically go down to the ground game. It's going to be entirely about the ground game then. Although we are seeing a revenant, surprisingly enough. Yes, it's kind of not what I expected, but yeah, revenant. Sure, why not? Same time, though, bit of scouting going over to the southwest, not finding much, but Steel Blue, not doing too bad economically. Main issue right now being Overdrive. Sparkles has just set up boatloads of wind generators in their backyard. Steel Blue, on the other hand, they have as few as they need. A little bit of Overdrive is now starting to come in, but that is Sparkles' advantage at the moment. However, it is such a minor advantage, I don't really see the point thinking about it. Honestly, the real advantage when we're... Oops. The real advantage when we're the other is going to be who has the larger army, and right now... It is Sparkles, by a very small margin. At that point, the question then becomes positioning, and, and the positioning here is very strong. Sparkles able to get in with a bunch of Scorchers, get rid of all the Metal Extractors, and at the same time, this Phoenix coming in should be able to get rid of the Glaive. Although, to be fair, that's a lot of Glaives. And that's a really nice dodge, too, by the Glaives. Completely avoiding, I mean, getting burned a little bit, but considering the amount of Glaives that were there, that was extremely effective. Same time, though, no real anti is being built up. Just a bunch of glaives to help get rid of the Scorchers that are trying to come into the main base, as well as just generally trying to deal with stuff. And no, the second set of, or the second attack on the glaives does destroy them, but a Revenant is up here for backup. Despite most of the glaives being gone, that Revenant is still relevant. Should be able to get rid of... Well, okay, if it was on a hold fire, should be able to get rid of some of the Caretakers. I think it'll last long enough to be able to actually do some meaningful damage here. At the very least, it is helping distract a bunch of other stuff, but it's not really doing much. Like, it... it Go for the caretakers or something like that. It's I don't understand why we aren't seeing the attack on the caretaker. I get kind of seeing the attack on the air factory here. I mean, the air factory is going to be very important. Get rid of that. And Stardust. Nicely done. Wasting that money. But there's only so long this Revenant has. And this... Nah, that's that's it. Yeah, that's... Bit of shame. He got rid of his Stardust. Didn't get rid of any of the caretakers. Didn't actually end up getting rid of the factory. General rule of thumb, don't go for the factory. It's got 4,000 HP. You're probably not going to kill it. I mean, you might. But you probably won't. At this point, though, switch over. Glaive and Reaver. Interesting mix, but I feel like it's just going to be completely countered by the Fencers. I mean, the Glaive is going to be able to do something against the Fencers, but the Reavers are going to get torn to pieces. The Glaives are having a hard time as it is, and with all the Phoenixes in the air, I'm not sure how much the Glaive is going to be able to actually get in and do work. I mean, I'll try for sure, but I just don't really see it. Well, at the very least, the Hacksaw is able to do its... Well, it's not really do its job. Sort of do its job. I mean, it's still five wind generators that have been destroyed with no real retaliation yet. Got rid of them. Got rid of the Phoenix, but didn't get rid of the Phoenix quickly enough. So at this point, really, it's just coming down to map control. Steel Blue has lost the northeast. Sparkles has taken the center. Glaives are coming in, trying to do what they can, but they aren't really finding a whole lot of value. Managing to get rid of. Actually, not going to get rid of a fair bit of their opponents, but it's just. The army size difference is so large that it's going to be difficult to actually push in. Like, basically at this point, it's going to come down to Steel Blue picking their battles very wisely. I do like the way that the Reavers were being pulled in while the Glaives are distracting the Fencers, though. That was a smart play. It's kind of run out of steam at this point. Only those first two Fencers were distracted, but hey, at the very least, these Reavers are actually managing to do quite a bit of work on the Fencers, surprisingly enough. You wouldn't think so, but yeah, Fencers are a bit of a weird unit, and Reavers... Reavers can just walk through them sometimes. Especially when you do have other units distracting them, but still, army to army, I I still got to give that to Sparkles. They, our Sparkles has an Air Force, Sparkles has twice the economy, and Steel Blue, I mean, they can kind of follow up with another small force here, but against what? I mean, there's nothing really vulnerable here. Everything that could be theoretically vulnerable, well, there's Stardust on it. That'll just wreck the Glaives. There's, there's no real way for the Glaives to get in here and start actually destroying anything, and Sparkles, they're ahead enough in their economy that they don't need to worry about this so much. The only thing is this tridents that were up here and they're kind of gone the commander kind of too but no steel blue doesn't even bother throws in the towel and that is game i do think it was a bit closer but i mean i get it steel blue lost their army 
They didn't really have much to work with. Sparkles did have a huge amount of defense and map control. Trying to break through that, it's not likely. Not without getting rid of all the Air Force and then coming with your own. But I do like the way that Steel Blue did go for a little bit of mind games on the gunship and the cloaky switch. I think the cloaky switch should have been held on to a little bit longer just to keep Sparkles thinking that it was going to be a very heavy air game and they needed to go for a bit more in the way of Crashers. But it wasn't... I wouldn't say that was the mistake. I think the problem was mainly just losing these expansions over here in the Northeast and not getting rid of the Caretakers when the chance was available. That I think if the Revenants had gone for the Caretakers, it would have slowed Sparkles' production down so much that Steel Blue would have been able to come back. Anyway, that was... That's the net. last game of tonight is going to be Google Frog and Kingstad on Living Lands. That'll actually be in the most recent version of the game, so that's not going to be this older version with different engine version. It is going to be everything recent, up to date, all the latest stuff, and it is going to be up in a couple of minutes. So stay tuned. <laughs>